For years, fifth-generation fighters like the F-35 and F-22 defined air supremacy. Now, a seventh generation is envisioned with sustained Mach 5 speeds, near-invisible stealth, and AI that learns on the fly. This race has drawn in superpowers and defense giants alike. The Pentagon's Skunk Works, Beijing's state-owned aviation labs, Moscow's design bureaus, all treat technology as a battleground and information as ammunition. The U.S. Air Force quietly flew a prototype next-generation fighter in 2020. China's AVIC displayed a mock-up dubbed White Emperor that hints at a hypersonic near-space interceptor. Russia is developing PAC-DP, a MiG-31 successor intended to hunt targets at the edge of the atmosphere. Trillions of dollars, decades of research, and the balance of global power are on the line. Before we begin, make sure to hit the like button. It helps us beat the YouTube algorithm. Hypersonic speed is becoming the new baseline for air combat. Mach 5, about 6,200 kilometers per hour, is the threshold at which a fighter could streak across continents in under an hour. At such velocity, a jet can outrun current interceptor missiles and compress global battlefields into minutes. But sustaining Mach 5 flight pushes aircraft to their thermal and mechanical limits. Friction with the air turns a plane's leading edges into blowtorches, forcing radical solutions. Engineers talk of circulating fuel as coolant through an airframe's hottest parts and using combined cycle engines that morph from turbojet to scramjet to handle speeds from takeoff to hypersonic cruise. Reaching these velocities is no longer optional. It's the ante to play in the seventh gen arena. Surviving hypersonic flight demands a revolution in materials. Traditional metal and carbon fiber airframes start to break down when friction heats a jet's skin to thousands of degrees. Designers are turning to ceramic composites and metamaterials, engineered structures that disperse heat and endure punishing stress. Airframes themselves may become morphing entities, with wings that flex or change shape in flight to optimize for speed or stealth. Engineers are even borrowing from biology. British researchers have demonstrated self-healing aircraft skin that seals punctures in midair using a liquid resin embedded in carbon nanotubes. These advances could make a fighter jet more like a living organism, able to adapt, survive damage, and keep fighting when lesser machines would fall from the sky. Before we continue, make sure to hit the subscribe button. It really helps the channel grow. The cat and mouse game of stealth versus detection is moving into the quantum realm. Quantum radar could nullify today's stealth by catching faint signals that conventional systems miss. In 2016, China's state media claimed a prototype quantum radar tracked a stealth plane at 100 kilometers, a boast met with skepticism. Militaries aren't waiting to find out. Stealth engineers are already fighting back with multi-spectral cloaking, radar-absorbent skins, infrared suppression, and even adaptive visual camouflage. Chinese developers tout plasma stealth, enveloping an aircraft in ionized gas to blur its radar image, while others experiment with injecting cool fluids into exhaust to hide heat plumes. In this escalating duel, a seventh-gen fighter must essentially vanish across the spectrum. Artificial intelligence is poised to take the stick. In 2020, a DARPA-trained AI defeated a seasoned U.S. Air Force F-16 pilot in five straight dogfights, exhibiting superhuman aim and reaction time. Developers are now teaching algorithms to fly real jets, manage swarms of drones, and make split-second tactical decisions that no human could. Air Force commanders openly imagine fighters without cockpits, aircraft that think, learn, and fight on their own. As one defense analyst put it, a seventh-generation fighter likely would be uncrewed and autonomous. The implication is profound. Wars may soon be contested by thinking machines acting at speeds humans can barely comprehend. One pilot will soon command not just one aircraft, but an entire flock. The new doctrine is a loyal wingman concept, a human pilot acting as a mission commander for swarms of autonomous drones. DARPA trials have already shown how a pilot can hand off tasks to an AI, and direct unmanned wingmen in battle. The U.S. Air Force envisions pairing each costly fighter with several cheaper autonomous wingmen, multiplying combat power without putting additional pilots at risk. In practice, a single stealth jet could coordinate a dozen unmanned scouts, decoys, and bomb-laden attackers, sending expendable machines into the most dangerous zones while the human operator stays as a backfield orchestrator. Air combat thus becomes a symphony of man and machine, with the pilot as the conductor and drones extending the reach and rhythm of every strike. The next generation of fighters won't stop at the stratosphere. They are intended to contest space as well as sky. A seventh-gen jet could blur the line between Air Force and Space Force by operating at near-orbital altitudes and engaging targets beyond the 
atmosphere. Designers talk of these aircraft carrying anti-satellite missiles to knock out enemy spacecraft and laser batteries to fire from the edge of space. A fighter might in one mission disable an orbital threat and in the next strike a target continents away, collapsing the distinction between air and space operations. Russian strategists have hinted that their pac dp interceptor will operate in near space to hunt warheads and satellites, and U.S. planners likewise view space as the new high ground for air combat. The very definition of a fighter jet is expanding upward into the final frontier. Tomorrow's fighter could fire weapons at the speed of light. Directed energy attacks, using focused lasers or microwaves, are shifting from science fiction to flight tests. In one U.S. demonstration, a prototype laser weapon shot down multiple missiles in midair, foreshadowing the day fighters carry laser pods to zap incoming threats. A laser-armed jet could burn enemy missiles out of the sky with virtually unlimited ammunition. Its only consumable is electricity, at a few dollars per shot. The catch is shrinking powerful lasers and keeping them cool on a supersonic plane. But if engineers can solve that, pulling the trigger would unleash a silent, invisible beam that swats down targets in an instant, where once a pilot might have needed a dozen interceptors. All these systems demand staggering onboard power. A fighter once only needed to run its engines and basic avionics. A seventh-gen jet must also feed energy-hungry lasers and sensors. To meet the demand, engineers are turning the propulsion system into a power plant. Advanced engines will double as generators, providing an order of magnitude more electricity than today's fighters. Some visionaries even eye nuclear solutions. Lockheed Martin has patented a compact fusion reactor design that could deliver on the order of 100 megawatts in a device small enough for an aircraft. Short of fusion, radical new battery systems or fuel cells may be needed to ensure a future fighter can power all its directed energy weapons and quantum sensors. In effect, the jet of the future might carry its own mini power station under the skin. Mastery of the electromagnetic spectrum is becoming as crucial as firepower. A seventh gen fighter is envisioned not just as a shooter, but as an electronic warfare hub, able to jam, deceive, and even hack adversaries. It will wield powerful jammers to blind enemy radars and disrupt communications, and it may act as a flying hacker, infiltrating networks from the sky. In fact, U.S. trials have already shown that a fighter's jammer pod can inject malicious code into an enemy system. Equally, these jets must be armored against incoming cyber and electronic attacks aimed at their own software and sensors. The advantage will go to whoever can turn the invisible spectrum into a decisive weapon. Even the way fighters are built is changing. Additive manufacturing, 3D printing, now allows aircraft parts to be fabricated on demand rather than mass-produced in distant factories. Components can be printed with intricate geometries that that traditional machining can't match, enabling faster prototyping and on-the-spot production of spares. The approach promises to streamline logistics. Instead of waiting weeks for a replacement part, a squadron might print one in hours. Engineers are even experimenting with 4D printed parts that alter their shape or properties in response to heat or stress, effectively creating structures that can adapt after manufacture. The fighter of the future could be a modular, reconfigurable platform one that can be upgraded or repaired with a digital blueprint and a printer, ensuring that technological edge can be updated as easily as software. Next-gen fighters are being built to fly and fight even in communications darkness. No GPS, no data links. One answer is quantum positioning, an onboard navigation system so precise and self-contained that the jet never needs satellite guidance rendering jamming or spoofing useless. Communications, meanwhile, are moving toward unbreakable channels. Using quantum encryption, a fighter could share data through keys that no eavesdropper can crack. Any interception would be apparent and the information would self-scramble. Even if all normal nav and comm signals are blinded in a conflict, a seventh generation jet will know its position to the inch and coordinate with its allies in absolute secrecy. Even human training is overhauling to keep pace with machine era warfare. Pilots are beginning to dogfight against virtual enemies projected in their visors while flying real jets, a blend of live flight and augmented reality that sharpens skills without costly exercises. AI is also stepping in as a tireless instructor, generating unpredictable tactics in simulators to push trainees beyond human versus human scenarios. Tomorrow's fighter school will teach orbital mechanics and quantum physics alongside dogfighting, because crews may need to conduct missions in space and manage entangled sensors or encrypted networks. The training ground is becoming as high-tech as the cockpit itself. Virtual reality battle labs, 
AI wingmen as adversaries, and data-driven debriefs to squeeze every lesson from each sortie. The fighter pilots of the 2040s will be forged in digital simulators long before they ever see real combat. These ultra-advanced fighters demand an equally advanced support network, maintaining stealth skin, quantum sensors, and AI brains calls for specialized facilities and highly trained technicians. The era of ground crew with only wrenches and grease is fading. Instead, climate-controlled hangars and secure digital maintenance systems are the new norm. The jets themselves will help. Built-in sensors will constantly monitor each component's health, and AI algorithms will predict parts that need replacement before they fail. This predictive maintenance approach keeps the fleet ready and avoids the sudden breakdowns that plague today's jets. A future fighter might even land and automatically flag that its left engine will need a specific part swapped out after the next mission, giving crews time to fix an issue before it becomes a crisis. Even the supply chain behind these jets is being reinvented for resilience. Critical spares could be fabricated on site with 3D printers instead of shipped across oceans. Every component and software patch may be tracked with blockchain-like security and encrypted to prevent tampering by saboteurs. Bases and maintenance hubs will be hardened against both physical attack and cyber intrusion, knowing that a fighter is only as effective as the fuel, parts, and data it relies on. Keeping a 7th Gen Squadron operational will require as much high-tech acumen as designing the jets themselves. The forces that master this support tail, ensuring their super jets are fueled, armed, updated and repaired under any circumstances, will hold a crucial edge when a conflict drags into attrition. The cost of entering the seventh generation era is astronomical. The F-35 program, a fifth generation jet, is projected to cost roughly $2 trillion over its lifetime, and the next generation could be even pricier. U.S. Air Force officials warn that each NGAD fighter might carry a price tag in the hundreds of millions. No nation can easily bear such burdens alone. The F-35 itself was developed by a consortium of eight allied countries sharing the expense and technology. Likewise, new fighters are emerging from partnerships. For example, Britain, Japan, and Italy have merged their development into a single global combat air program to share the load of a sixth generation jet. These coalitions spread the financial risk and ensure multiple militaries benefit from the leap. Building a 7th gen fighter is thus not just a military endeavor, but a geopolitical and industrial one, a test of alliances and economic muscle as much as engineering prowess. This contest is not just about bragging rights, it could redefine global power. Military planners know that whoever fields these technologies first will hold a massive advantage in conflict. Some liken the stakes to the dawn of the nuclear age. When China tested a hypersonic glide vehicle in 2021, the US Joint Chiefs Chairman called it very close to a Sputnik moment, a technological shock that can tilt the balance of power overnight. Such asymmetry breeds insecurity. Fears of falling behind are already driving a cycle of action and reaction, as each major power accelerates its programs to avoid ceding ground to the others. Strategists warn that this feedback loop could spiral into an arms race with unpredictable consequences. If one nation appeared on the verge of an uncounterable 7th gen arsenal, rivals might even contemplate desperate measures potentially a preemptive strike rather than live at its mercy. Conversely, a state that achieves tech dominance might be emboldened to pressure or provoke adversaries, confident that its overmatch will deter retaliation. In the end, a monopoly on these weapons could just as easily destabilize the world as secure it. The very race meant to guarantee security could become the flashpoint that jeopardizes it. Beyond strategy and cost, there lies an ethical minefield. Allowing algorithms to decide when to take a human life turns the legal and moral rules of war on their head. International humanitarian law was built around human judgment in the use of lethal force, yet a fully autonomous fighter would remove that control entirely. Military ethicists warn that such killer robots could make war more merciless and raise nightmarish questions of accountability. If an AI pilot mistakes a civilian target or violates the rules of engagement, who is to blame? The world has begun grappling with these issues. United Nations panels have debated limits on autonomous weapons for years, but the major powers have balked at binding rules. As militaries race ahead with AI, the laws of war are struggling to catch up. The seventh generation fighter might arrive before humanity even agrees on whether it should. Even the push for green technology touches this arms race. Fighter jets are notorious gas guzzlers, 
but future designs aim to be slightly kinder to the planet without sacrificing power. Air forces are testing biofuels and synthetic fuels to cut carbon emissions. The British Royal Air Force has even pledged to reach net zero carbon by 2040 in its operations. Engineers are studying hydrogen as a potential high-performance fuel and exploring hybrid engines that could improve efficiency. Cleaner manufacturing is also on the agenda. Additive techniques and advanced materials may reduce waste in production. While combat effectiveness remains king, environmental pressures are forcing defense planners to consider emissions and sustainability in ways they never did before. The 7th Gen fighter might still scorch the skies at Mach 5, but it could sip a greener fuel while doing so. For all the high-tech wizardry, these fighters will not be magic wands. History is filled with superior weapons that failed without the right strategy, training, and support. A 7th generation jet is only as effective as the doctrine guiding its use and the infrastructure backing it up. It will rely on tankers to refuel on long missions, on secure communications and surveillance to direct it, and on pilots and commanders trained to exploit its advantages. Military leaders caution there are no silver bullets. Fielding a revolutionary fighter means rethinking tactics, upgrading networks, and drilling crews to harness its potential. A cutting-edge plane in unprepared hands can quickly turn into an expensive target. In the end, Victory will hinge not on any one platform's specs, but on how well its owners integrate these new capabilities into a coherent warfighting system. One side effect of this arms race could be a leap for civilian technology. Historically, military R&D has seeded breakthroughs that transformed everyday life. Think of the jet engine, the internet, or GPS. The quest for hypersonic flight, advanced propulsion, and metamaterials might yield innovations that spill into the commercial sector. A material developed to survive Mach 5 could find use in ultra-fast civilian aircraft or more efficient engines. Improvements in battery energy density or compact reactors to power fighters could one day revolutionize clean energy on the ground. Manufacturing techniques honed for these jets, such as precise 3D printing of complex structures, will likely spread to aerospace and other industries. In chasing the next superfighter, we may inadvertently be inventing new tools and technologies that benefit the broader economy and society in the long run. Yet nothing about the seventh gen race is guaranteed. Cutting edge projects can meet abrupt dead ends or unexpected breakthroughs. Engineers are leveraging AI-driven design and digital prototyping to speed development, but unforeseen snags or spiraling costs could still cause delays. Many experts don't expect a true seventh-generation fighter to even fly before the 2050s. Much will depend on the defense industry titans turning blueprints into reality. Companies like Lockheed Martin, Boeing, Northrop Grumman, and BAE Systems are pouring resources into these programs. Their successes, rivalries, and setbacks will dictate how fast and how well the technology matures. Industrial hurdles, securing rare materials, scaling production, training specialized workers could introduce further twists. In the end, the road to a seventh-gen fighter is as much a test of management and economic stamina as it is of innovation, full of wild cards that could accelerate or derail the journey. Amid all the technological excitement, it is easy to lose sight of what these weapons are supposed to achieve. The true measure of a seventh-generation fighter is not in its speed, range, or stealth, but in its strategic effect. Does it stabilize a tense situation by deterring aggression, or does it spark an arms spiral as rivals rush to counter it? The ultimate goal of military supremacy is to secure peace on favorable terms. Yet an overwhelming advantage can also breed hubris or panic. As generals and defense ministers revel in specifications and milestones, the sobering question remains, will fielding this superfighter make the world safer or more dangerous? The answer will depend on how wisely leaders wield their new air power and whether diplomacy can keep pace with doctrine. In the end, the success of the seventh generation fighter will be judged not by airshow awe, but by the decades of relative peace or conflict that follow in its wake. What does it mean for global security if only a handful of nations can afford this level of military technology? How do democratic societies debate trillion dollar weapons programs that most voters can barely comprehend? And as war fighting becomes a contest of algorithms and autonomous systems, where does human judgment fit in? or sovereign accountability for decisions made at machine speed? These are the questions hovering over the seventh generation fighter, even as it hurdles toward deployment. The seventh generation race has begun, and whoever wins it will command a disproportionate influence over the future of warfare and world order. Remember to hit like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Your support means a lot.